and they'll give you another half. And what you're doing is just adding a half loads of times. So it's pretty clear that this, this indeed diverges. And so by comparison, because each element here is larger than the element here, this guy must also diverge as well. So that's the proof that, that this diverges. Now, oh, hang on. But each element of one. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> were you using a different method? Or? Okay. Okay. So let's. So this is. So it's good. So why is there no magic? Why is there no magic for this series that there was there was for this one? Okay. Now, I mean, there's various ways of, of, of proving the top result, but this kind of the most elegant, and it's also related to, to this series as well, is to use um, the Riemann zeta function, which we which, which we talked about when uh, when we were doing those videos. So of course, the Riemann zeta function you define as kind of the sum of these reciprocals, but to some power, okay? So one over n to the z. So here, this would be when z equals one, okay? This would correspond to this sequence here. When z equals minus one, you get this sequence here. What you do, so you define these, these set of, um, the, you know, this function this way, right? And of course, it, it's well defined clearly when, uh, when z, the real part of z is bigger than one. What you then do is you come up with some maybe alternative uh, integral representation so that, that can also describe the function and allows you to extend its, its definition even when the real part of z is, is less than 1. Okay? And it's for that reason that we can say that uh, psi of minus 1 is minus a 12, which is why we get this result. Now, what happens at z equals 1, though, in any of the representations of, of this guy? And the problem is, whichever way you look at it, it's always infinity. The story is that this Riemann zeta function, it actually has what's called a pole at z equals 1. It's not what we call analytic there. So what we're doing here when we get to this, these results like this minus of 12, we're doing analytic continuation. But you can only do that if the thing you're interested in is, is analytic, as it has nice properties. It's nice and smooth and so on and so forth. At 1, at the point 1, it's really not that. It blows up. It diverges. It, 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 there's a, a spike in the, in the shape of the function. There's no getting away from that. It's really not analytic there. The answer really is infinity. There is no magic that you can do. I, f I forgot something because this gamma's everywhere, so you forget all the places that it's at, right? So back to the zeta function, right? Back to this Riemann zeta function. Okay, so I've told you that it blows up at z equals 1, right? So what we can do is we can expand it around z equals 1, and we know how it behaves. Okay, so near z equals 1, it goes like 1 over z minus 1 to leading order. So this is the bit that blows up. The next term, that bad boy. <laughs> Here he is again, good old gamma. <laughs> All the rest did disappear. But, um, yeah, so yeah, it's there again. Here he is. <laughs>